Good day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to be covering Lesson 8, Demonstration 2 of my Learn Dynamo series. Uh, so we've had one demonstration already, this is the second one, um, and we're really showing how to use family type and instance techniques that we've learned in the previous lesson. Um, so today we're going to be doing a demonstration looking at how to put family creation techniques into practice. Um, so just for a bit of context for what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to look at uh, crowd generation, so how to generate a semi-random group of people in Revit, which is often a common task that I've had to do for visualization exercises for large spaces such as plazas. Um, and rather than having to place all these elements randomly or semi-randomly uh, by hand, um, instead there's ways to do it with Dynamo involving family placement. So a few techniques we're going to show in this session is family type filtering, randomization, which is pretty fun, and uh, family instance placement and family instance rotation. So without further ado, we'll go into Dynamo. So just for a bit of context, we're going to be basically sourcing a floor as the source for how we place the people. So obviously the script is going to work in a way such that it works within the bounds of this floor for the random points that it's allowed to place the people at. Um, just so you understand, the people are basically just a bunch of simple families uh, that I've built in the past um, that are more or less just mesh objects from AutoCAD uh, that look semi-decent semi from a distance. Obviously up close, they're not the prettiest thing, but they get the job done. They're just cat objects. Um, so that's what they are. If, if you're interested in having them, just uh, send me a message and I'm happy to make them available to you if you think they'll help you out in your day-to-day -day work. Anyway, we'll jump straight into Dynamo. So we're gonna start basically by getting a list of all our family types of entourage. So we wanna get family types of category. Uh, there's a lot of nodes that can do this. Uh, but we're just going to use the family types by category because I believe this one is out of the box. I'll just cross check for you just to make sure you don't have to go and get any custom packages for it. Family type, actually that one's from Orchid. So let's use the one from Clockwork instead um, because that one's easier to get a hold of uh, unlike the Orchid package. So the category that we're going to get is Entourage. So we're going to just search for the category dropdown in this case and we're just going to get Entourage as our category. This way we're not dealing with every single family type in the entire project and the script is a bit faster to run. Um, this particular node from Clockwork needs a toggle um, in order to actually run the start of the script, which is set to true. And I think document or Revit instance will also need um, current or active document node. So I think current is the one that we need. And we'll just take the out of the box current document node. And we'll just run and double check that that is collecting. And you'll see, there we go, we're collecting all our family types. And you'll remember in the last um, lesson that these are actually elements. Uh, so they have IDs. So we're not looking at a string here at the moment. We're not looking at text. So we need to actually filter these. So let's say that we want to place women and men, but we don't want to place dogs. So we need to get rid of certain criteria from the list. So we have to choose how to filter our list at this point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna filter it based on whether the name of the family contains man underscore anywhere in there, which will meet the criteria for war man and man, of course, or woman as you would say it. <laughs> um, so we're gonna get the type name uh, of the family, which I believe is one of these nice family type name. This will convert these into strings and we'll end up with a list of all these. And we'll just move these down because we're ultimately gonna do a, um, a filter on this, this list originally. And we're just gonna do a string contains. And we're just gonna double check if those strings contain uh, man underscore. And in this case, we do need to ignore case because man has a capital M, but um, obviously woman will have a lower case because it's part way through the word. So we will ignore case. And we should end up with a bunch of booleans at this point. So you can see that it's identified that dog doesn't meet that criteria. So we're going to filter by boolean mask. Um, you recall this is one of my favorite nodes in Dynamo. Basically you take a list of items, apply a list of trues and falses, and the ins are your trues and the outs are your false. So you can see that the dog is now managed out as a family type. So at this point, what we're going to do is build a, a random seed or a random list of types to apply to a, a set number of people. So we're going to make an integer slider that lets us specify how many people we want to place in our scene. So let's say it's anywhere between zero and 30 people at once with a step of one. And obviously the minimum must be one. And we'll just take that there. And what we're going to do is generate a random list of numbers. So random numbers is the node that we'll be using. 
I believe that that one is out of the box. Um, actually, it looks like this one comes from the lunchbox package. Um, but I find this node very handy, so I highly advise um, downloading the Lunchbox package. I believe this one now has to be downloaded off their website instead. So if you Google Lunchbox for Dynamo, you'll be able to find that package. Okay, uh, so from there, we're going to generate a sequence of random numbers. So obviously, we want to generate uh, basically a sequence that correlates to the integer or the integer of the index of the type to source because we're going to take a random type, basically. So we're going to start at zero, because our index list starts as zero, as you remember. And we're also going to count how many items we have in our list. And that number will represent the number of types from there. However, because we start at zero, we technically finish at one less than that. So we're going to do a x take one code block for a formula. You remember in lesson five that we touched on code blocks and design script, um, if you need a refresher on what I'm doing there. Okay, so at that point we have two things in randomization to deal with. One is how many numbers we want. The other one is what's called the seed. So randomization is technically never quite random. Um, it's basically being sourced from a, a definition uh, stored on the computer or in the program. So in this case, the seed is gonna represent uh, an element of randomization, but with a set degree of control. So if I used seed five twice, I would get the same outcome. However, if I pick another seed, it will give me a completely different distribution. So we're gonna make our seed quite variable. We'll just make it one to a hundred. And basically what we should get if we run that is a list of, at the moment it's a list of random numbers. Um, so what we really want is we want more than one. Let's just say we'll get 10. Okay, so we're getting numbers at the moment, so we do need to round these, so we will use the round, the round node, just so that we get a whole number, which can allow us to get an index, because obviously indexes are whole numbers. Okay, so at the moment this might not make a great deal of sense of what I've done so far, but it's about to make sense. So, you recall back here we have all our family types. So basically what we're going to do is feed this into a get item at index. And we're basically going to get random index or random indices from that particular list of families. So we'll just push that out of the way. And now if I run this, you'll see we've ended up with 10 random family types. So if I change my seed to say 33, you'll notice they all change. So this is how you can get randomization of types to set. Uh, so what we need now is random points. So what we're going to do is take uh, a select model element and we're going to select our floor. So we'll just take select model element. We'll just minimize this window so that we can see our model. And we're going to just source our floor. And this is where we're going to distribute our random points. Now we're going to use a node that's called um, parameter at point. And basically what this does is it, pick, it takes a number between zero and one and it maps it uh, a certain distance along the UV or the, the, the mapping of that face. So we're going to take point at parameter. So it basically expects a U and a V value between zero and one and a surface. So that in this case, actually what we need to do is take our, our surface on top of our floor. So we're going to use a node called top surface. And this one, I believe comes from the rhythm package, but I'll just cross check. There are other ways to get the top surface without using custom nodes. Um, they're just a little bit longer. So you could take the two uh, faces with the, the highest area, filter them out, and then take the one that's the highest in Z value. Um, but this is obviously a lot faster. And I believe that's probably what this node is doing anyway. So that's our surface. Uh, but what we need now is a set of random U's and random V's. So we're gonna go and call on that random function again. And we're gonna take a different sequence now. So we'll start at zero, but we'll finish at one instead. So we'll just make a one code block here. And this is now our maximum. And we could feed ourselves into the same seed, um, but I prefer to just make it slightly more random. So we'll just do x plus one and x plus two. So that we're always operating on different seeds for our two sets of u and v. It doesn't really matter because the seeds will probably generate different outcomes anyway but I'd rather just be as random as possible. So these are our U's and these are our V's. 
so what we should expect now is a list of random numbers between 0 and 1. And we're going to feed those into our U's and our V's. And we need to lace this list to longest so that it will take the surface once for each set of U's and V's we're giving it. And now what we should expect is a set of points that are randomized. So if we just zoom out, we should eventually find our floor. There we go. And if I just scroll over and get a better look at the floor, you'll see that I might just go into automatic mode so you can see this dynamically changing. But you can see as I add points, you can see the number of outcomes growing. But notice how the points don't move around themselves. That's because of the seed. If I change the seed around, you'll see then the points scatter. So it's pretty cool to watch that dynamically change and sort of understand how Dynamo really deals with randomization. Um, obviously, the last thing we need to do is combine these points and families into placing an actual family itself. So what we'll do is we'll do family instance by point. By point. Okay, so now we're going to take the family type and then the respective point as well. And we might just flatten these surface points just to be safe. I don't think we have to, but I usually like to keep my lists at the same level as each other when I operate them together. Okay, so now we're just going to minimize this window. And you'll see now we already have, we already have people, that's interesting. I might just get rid of them, I'm not sure how they join the scene. Maybe they were from a previous exercise I was doing. Ah, of course, I'm on automatic mode. <laughs> so they were being generated straight away. Um, but what I can do now is say I want maybe 14 people, 47 seed run, and there's my crowd. Um, and obviously I can keep changing them. And because I'm running off one version of the same script, rather than a Dynamo player which refreshes the script, what will happen every time I do this is it will take the old people and regenerate new ones. Um, it's just an interesting behavior of how family instance creation works in Dynamo when you're working in the Dynamo environment itself. If you want to actually keep adding people uh, over and over again, um, run this through Dynamo Player or close the script and reopen it typically is the best way to do it. You could also toggle uh, the family type of category node and I believe that refreshes the whole script. So at that point we have a really interesting script that we can play with. Um, so we can do things like change our floor size and we can also move it somewhere else. And we can run that again and we get a whole different distribution of people. And if we go to automatic mode, you'll see just how, how interesting the script can look can be to watch. Um, so we can literally start adding people to the scene and shuffling the seed. So it's really interesting. Um, I, I always find this one a really entertaining script to watch. Um, but what we're going to do last is you'll notice that everyone's facing just zero degrees by default. So it's a little bit creepy. Um, crowds don't really behave that way. So what we're going to do is take one more set of random values. In this case, they're random because we're going to be randomizing an angle between 0 and 360 degrees. So our minimum is fine, but what we're going to do is take 360 as our maximum. And again, we're going to take one more seed. And we're going to add three so that our seeds are always separate. And then the last thing we're going to do is family instance set rotation. There we go, and we'll feed those in, and then we'll connect our degrees from our random set of values. And there you go. You can see that now our people will all face random directions. So as we cycle through now, we should get a very random outcome with the crowds. And obviously some crowds will not work, some might have people on top of other people, but for the most part you can see that it's working quite well. And we can obviously get quite a, quite a dense crowd happening, but obviously we could make a larger a larger floor area to deal with that. So it's a very dynamic script. Um, you can see, there we go, it updated already. Um, so pretty cool, right? Um, so hopefully you have fun building scripts like this. There's a lot of potential for randomization in design when you have more freedom in what you can do. Um, this is just a fun example of what you can do with it. Okay. So that was our demonstration of family instances. If you need any help, um, obviously you can leave comments down below and always leave suggestions as well if there's things you'd like to see. Um, but the Dynamo Primer is a great way to learn as well and the Dynamo Forums are a helpful place to get advice.
Um, so in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at geometry at last. Um, because we've focused on data families and Revit, um, geometry comes last, in my opinion, in the, in the list of important things to learn. So we're going to touch on fundamentals and how to build a basic tower form. Um, so hopefully I'll see you in the next lesson. Um, if you enjoy what you're seeing, feel free to subscribe and follow, and feel free to leave any comments. Um, I'm probably going to move on to some more advanced Dynamo series just for about a week um, for those that are following live with my sessions as they're released. Um, but I will come back to this series about a week after that again. Um, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next lesson. Take care. Bye.